Sri Lanka and England will face off in the final Group 1 game of the T20 World Cup and it promises to be a clash with a lot online. The two teams have met each other 13 times in the format and the Englishmen have dominated the tally with 9 wins and Sri Lanka have only 4. Since 2014, the Lions are yet to beat England in a T20 encounter and the last time Sri Lanka won against England in the T20 World Cup was back in 2012. So Sri Lanka will be hoping to end these two long-standing streaks against England on Saturday. Sri Lanka's fate will be already sealed when they face England on Saturday after the Ireland vs New Zealand and Australia vs Afghanistan encounters. If the result from any of the two games go in Sri Lanka's favour, Sri Lanka will walk into Saturday's game with a chance of qualifying for the semi-finals. Even without a chance at the semis, Sri Lanka should definitely get the win in this encounter to sign off in style. After two back-to-back -back losses against Australia and New Zealand, the Islanders managed to beat their Asian force Afghanistan comfortably with six wickets in hand. It was a decent all-round outing for the Lankans as their fielding looked much better compared to the game against the Kiwis. England's tournament so far has had everything. They won the opening game against the Afghans and then lost to Ireland which was an upset that pushed them back in the tournament. With the game against the host getting abandoned due to rain, they had to beat the unbeaten Kiwis and they did exactly that as their top order batters managed to hit form at the right time. With a higher possibility of qualifying for the semis than Sri Lanka, a win here might very well give England the chance to edge out Australia in terms of net run rate to qualify for the semi-finals. For three games in a row, the Sri Lankan openers Pratum Nishankar and Kusal Mendes were unable to provide the team with the usual style they are known for. If Sri Lanka are to have any hope of winning against England, they desperately need one of these two or to make it better for both of them to come out with good knocks. Handling the extra pace of Mark Wood will be one of the main challenges for Sri Lanka in the upcoming clash and these two are the perfect batters to counter that threat. If these two can provide Sri Lanka the needed start against the pace bowlers, the likes of Dhananjay De Silva, Soit Asalanka and Banu Rajapaksha can handle the spin bowling of Adil Rashid and Moeen Ali. Another key area of focus will be making the decision of going with the extra spinner or not. Jeffrey Van Der Sey is yet to feature in any of the games in the tournament and it will be interesting to see if that's a risk Sri Lanka are willing to take. It's fair to say that England has all of their areas covered at the moment. Their openers Alex Hills and Josh Butler came into form at the right time and the bowlers have been doing a great job, especially Mark Wood who is generating some serious space. If they do have any concerns, it's going to be the middle order and finishing aspects. So Harry Brook and Liam Livingston have not performed up to the expectations and if they do manage to get over the line against Sri Lanka and qualify for the final four, they'll dearly love those two names to come into form with a couple of dashing knocks. For the all-important final clash, Sri Lanka are expected to go unchanged but there will be a slight selection bus surrounding the extra spinner matter. With Sydney being suitable for spinners, an opportunity for Jeffrey Van Der Sey may be on the cards. But a higher possibility is with Sri Lanka coming into this clash unchanged. On the other hand, England, after a quality outing against the Kiwis, will most definitely go with the same playing 11 for this duo die clash. Sri Lanka's best batter during the Super 12 stage has been Bananjay De Silva by far. Against the top quality bowling attacks of this round, no one else has looked to be timing the ball as well as he did and to go with his cunning off spinners against Ben Stokes and Moin Ali, the two main left-handers of England. He will be the weapon in hand for skipper Dasun Shanakar. How DDS just punched the number one T20 bowler in the world, Rashid Khan, to all parts of the Gabba, and his sheer timing against the left arm pace bowling of Farid Ahmed and Fazal Haq Faruqi was an absolute treat to watch during his phenomenal knock of 66 against Afghanistan. With Kusar Mendes and Patu Mishanga both having back to back off games, Dhananjay De Silva will be the key player for Sri Lanka due to his fine form in recent games. Josh Butler and Alex Hales have both scored centuries against Sri Lanka in a T20 World Cup. Those two knocks completely took the game away from Sri Lanka and these two are certainly capable of pulling out a similar effort on Saturday. Hales who returned to the side in place of Jason Roy found form at the right time against the Kiwis with a half century and just like him, skipper Josh Butler found his old rhythm with a stunning 73 over the same opposition. 
With both of them finding form at the crucial moment, the Sri Lankan bowlers will have to be really careful while handling them come Saturday. The Sydney venue has delivered the most spin during this World Cup and the spinners are expected to play a wider role in the final result on Saturday. The weather conditions for the fifth look excellent for a quality game of cricket as the group closing encounter promises to provide a lot of action.